Teresa, you have to relax. Right? I'm gonna take you to your place so we can move our joyous occasion along. had to. Look, all that tramp has ever wanted is to snare a crane. Looks to me like it's her lucky day. I still think we should leave. No, Julian, we better not. The bottle will be furious if we leave before his second surprise. Patience, my friends. You won't have much longer to wait. Trent, we can bring his neck. Shh, Sam, don't let him hear you. As if it could make things much worse for me and my family. Look around you, Ivy. Your ex-father-in-law has created hell on earth for everyone in this room. And here we all sit, like trained rats in a cage, waiting for more. What'd they say? Will they be able to find Luis? Oh, this guy's fast, but I just called him that favor. Julian? I'd rather be dead. What about my grandsons, then? Fox, join me? No. <laughs> well... Doesn't bother me none. I'm, I'm glad he didn't consider me part of his crazy family. All righty then. Now, uh, what about Teresa? She has so many friends here and family. I'm sure one of them would be willing to stand up with my bride. Hello, Whitney. Cat. Oh, my goodness, what a heartfelt show of support. It doesn't make any difference, though. This wedding is going to happen, whether you like it or not. Are we ready to begin, John? Whenever you say, Mr. Crane. Opportunities to try and talk Teresa out of her relationship with me, and you all failed. So, if you really do love Teresa as you say you do, then you would respect her wishes. Come, dear. Come. We need a couple of legal witnesses, Mr. Crane. What are you talking? I got a room full of witnesses here. No, no, I mean people who are willing to sign the marriage certificate. Oh. You. Come with me. This one will do? Uh, one more. One more. Mr. Aaron, I don't know what your name is. Just come with me, please. Thank you. Thank you. Right here, right here, right here. Right here. Uh, darling, meet your uh, maid of honor. No. Can we get on with this? Ah, uh, because nothing and nobody is going to stop this from happening. I, I bet. Wait! What? I don't care who you are, Alistair. I'm not going to let this happen. Uh-oh. This is the one person in the room who might be able to talk to me about this. I guess when you've lost everything that really matters to you, it gives you the courage that you never knew you had. Well, that's fine. Now, why don't you go sit down and uh, be quiet? Not till I talk to Teresa. Wow, she's got guts. Yeah, no kidding. No, 
Wait, no. Don't go up against Alistair. Mom, it's okay. He can't do anything to me that he hasn't already done. Listen to your mother, little girl. I'm not a little girl, Alistair. I'm the mother of your great-grandchild. Yes, don't remind me. This isn't about you and me. This has nothing to do with you. This has to do with Teresa, my best friend, and what we've shared ever since we were little girls. Now, I know what's going through your mind right now. You know what? You need to go sit down now, please. We've known each other our whole lives, and I want you to look me in the eye and tell me that this is the wedding of your dreams. Why don't you just leave my bride to be alone? I'm going to talk to her alone. You're not going through with this. Oh, thank God. Maybe Whitney will be able to talk Teresa out of this mess. I wouldn't count on that. My father can be a very persuasive man. Now, I know what your dream wedding is. And I know who you're marrying in that dream. And it is not Alistair Crane. A man who has kidnapped, who's, who's raped, who tried to have his own daughter killed. Now, how are you going to stand there by his side about to be his lawful wedded wife? Because it's the only way. It's the only way to completely ruin your life is what it is. And the life of everyone who loves you. God, don't do this. Look, you're not going to get what you want. No, you don't know that, Whitney. Even if Ethan did want you after this travesty of a wedding, Alistair's not going to let you go. You see, he doesn't help people, and you know that. Now, I, I don't know what his twisted motives are for wanting to marry you, but it certainly has nothing to do with love. Okay. Okay. I don't want to do this. I don't. This is my last shot. Well, I'm here to tell you it's going to backfire. And it's not too late. Okay, you can walk out of here with me right now. Okay, we can leave. Alistair's not going to be able to do anything in front of all these people. They're all going to want to protect you. Okay, great. We, we, we walk out of here, and then what happens after that? We, you know, I'm stuck right where I was before, right? I'm stuck without Ethan, and I'm stuck without my daughter. Well, it's better than making a pact with the devil. And what about the life that I've always wanted, Whitney? The life with my son, my, my other child, Ethan. I mean, do I not deserve to have the family that I've always dreamed about? You don't always get what you deserve. Fate is not a fact, okay? It's a fairy tale. And you better learn that now before it's too late. Okay, I'm sorry. I really am sorry. I bet you cannot talk me out of this. Wow. I mean, I always thought I was going to be your maid of honor. <laughs> you don't even know her name. <laughs> well, you still can be. In a ceremony that I think is a complete disaster? No, I don't think so. You could do it for me. Because it would be the one thing in my dream that would come true. Okay, fine. God, I hate that you're about to do this. I guess I'm not going to let you do it alone, okay? Um, I'm ready. Uh, Whitney will be my maid of honor. Good. Enough of this lollygagging around, then. <clears throat> Shall we begin? Oh, no. I so hope she can convince Teresa. Ethan, this is terrible. We are gathered here to celebrate one of life's most special occasions. To give recognition to the worth and beauty of love. What's love got to do with this obscenity? Alistair Crane and Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald in everlasting happiness. With Mrs. Crane very shortly, my dear. Think about it, Teresa. Either I'm very 
very good at making wild guesses around telling you the truth. And you'll live in a mansion as Mrs. Crane. It's your choice. I always thought Gypsy meant that I would marry Ethan when she told me that I would marry a crane. Did she really mean Alistair? <laughs> I just love it when old predictions come true. Especially when they evoke such a monumental pain and shock. If there is anyone here with good reason why this couple should not be united in holy matrimony... Holy hell is more like it. Let them speak now or forever hold their peace. I object! This truly is obscene. She can't marry you, Alistair. You're forcing her into this. As you can see, there are no objections, so let's just move on. But the whole time... Yes? I said move on. Yes, sir. Do you, Alistair Crane? Yes, 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 of course I do. And you, Teresa Lopez? Well, Fitzgerald? yes, she does. She certainly does. Yes. By the power vested in me, I hereby pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. It's the dark side in the world celebrating a huge victory. From this day forward, every guest in attendance here will live in their own private house. <laughs> what have you done indeed, Teresa? Oh, look at them in Dora. Like lemmings have all marched into the sea and don't know it. <laughs> This time in her unending quest to have it all. Oh, they're all going to have it all from this night forward. <laughs> Each and every one of them. Oh, that's strange. In one minute, it's like a hurricane, and the next second, it's just over. Just like we imagined the whole thing. Only we didn't. Thunder and lightning's just as real as Alistair's marriage to Teresa. Por favor, señor. Protect my Teresa. Protect my daughter. For she knows not what she's done. It is my great privilege and honor to present Mr. and Mrs. Alistair Crane. Mm -hmm. 